course here where I am right now. <laughs> if it wasn't for it, I wouldn't be spiced Diana. Zengowa, I get tired. I work so hard. Okay. Hi Spice. Hi, how are you? You good? I'm great. Okay. Uh, so we're going into your profile. Uh, we're going to do a little bit from scratch. Then uh, I'll list it with um, uh, what's your real name, stage name, religion and status. Nampoya <laughs> Hajara, known as Spice Diana. Um, I grew up from a Muslim Muslim family with my stepdad. That's why I have this, the Hajara name, in case you're wondering why Hajara did Diana. My real dad was a, a Catholic, so I grew up with a stepdad who was Muslim, but myself, I'm a Christian. But I respect both religions because they raised me. Yeah. Um, it's either single or married. Over. Isn't it like that? Or, or both? No, I'm not confused. I'm seeing someone. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Since the last relationship. So I'm in a new one. Yeah, for some good years. Yeah. Where were you born and raised from? I was born from um, Zambia Hospital and then raised at, um, where, where was I raised? Yampelire, that's where my mom and dad used to stay. And then when my, my dad separated with my mom, we moved to Kabalagala for a few years with our stepdad. Then I moved to Nansana for like a year. Then went to Nankulabie for some good years and that's where I started my career from. Yeah. Um, how was your life when uh, growing up as a kid, when you started uh, like realizing things as a kid? How was your life? My life was, uh, well, can I say it was amazing? Not really because I, my mom separated with my real dad when I was at the age of four or five. So things were not easy really. They were tough and then until... Um, we joined, I would say, Amzilatsa, our stepdad, that raised us up to, um, he raised and paid our school fees up to when I was in senior, senior six, no, so it's senior two at St. Peter's in Zambia. And then there were other, you know, family issues again, and then we had to stay by our own. That's my mom and my three other siblings. So life was a bit tough, but I'm grateful for the experience because they made me who I am. Because growing up with a ma, with a single mother, taught me to be an independent woman, to be hardworking, to be a caring sister, to be a parent to myself, my siblings, and my loved ones because probably if, if I had a father I wouldn't I, I wouldn't go through the whole experience of taking care of your siblings and taking care of yourself because after um, our stepdad left that's when I had to you know start working probably I was at the age of um, 14 and then helping my mom to take care of the family and all that and then I had to raise my own school fees take myself to campus and uh, yeah, it was a bit tough, but at least I've learned from the whole situation of, you know, staying with a single mother down in the slums. Actually, that's, that's, that's through the whole process is when I realized that I can, I can sink. So that's why I can say proudly that the whole situation made me because that's when I realized I can sink. Then devote my talent from the slums of Nankulabie and yeah I managed to you know be somebody um how was your behavior when young when growing up like um my behaviors I used to be a loner like so much even now um it's still in me though it's hard to tell because I have so many people around me people that care about me people I care about so and the nature of my business it's so hard to 
to be by yourself but sometimes I get moments and I'm, I'm alone and, and I love them you know I love to spend time by myself so I used to be alone so much and um, I was a, a busy kid I never had I never enjoyed like other teenagers like you play around you know enjoy school because I was rushing the, the only time I had I could like be either at school or working so I could be rushing all the time from school to work from work to school so I, I, I didn't grow up like other kids you know because from the age of 13 14 I was busy working with my mom to take care of my other siblings because they were young and I'm the eldest so and I was disciplined that I know up to now and uh, it really my discipline has taken me places because growing up without like family support I grew up in the hands of strangers and because of my, my discipline you could find a teacher who will help you with your studies and you know he's a stranger he doesn't know about you or she doesn't know so much about you but they are willing to help you because of your behaviors in school and um, what else as far as I remember yeah I was friendly by the way I was very friendly I made so many friends and they were my first supporters in school as I started to sing and I was friendly with the teachers as well and things were not tough in school because I mean, I was so many people's favorite. Yeah. So, um, when we go by that, uh, please take us through the schools you went to. Um. In my primary, I, I went to one primary school because when my dad, real dad, separated with my mom, I think I was just in a, um, in nursery, and then I had to sit for like. A year or two years and I when we when we met our stepdad that's when I joined uh, primary one and then I went to Valerian primary school up to my primary seven and uh, Valerian. Shibuli, yeah then uh, I went to st. Peter's in Zambia for my senior one to senior senior two no senior three yeah from senior one to senior three and then that's that's when my stepdad left us and uh, things were tough there was no money you know to continue because centers was a very a little bit expensive for me and my mom so we had to go down to Nankulabie I found a school in Chiwunya because I wanted to finish my senior four so I went to it's called um, our Lady of Fatima. I don't know if it's still there. Mm, it's down there in Chiwunya. So I went there to at least finish my senior four. And then after that, I went to um, I went to Kampala Citizen College. It's in town. It was an adult school. But it was just like trying to push because there was no money to, you know, to, to go to good schools, so I was just trying to at least push up to senior six. So I went to Kampala Citizen College, and that's where I got a, an opportunity to join to join Makere University. Yeah, so I went to Makere University for three years. I got a degree in industrial finance and design. Yeah, and I'm here. Mm. Uh, what did you want to be in life? Before realizing you can do music, in your in your opinion, what did you want to be? My stepdad wanted me to be a doctor, but I wasn't good at sciences though. I was I wasn't really good. I was so good in arts. I loved drawing. I loved painting. From primary school, so for me, I wanted something else. Uh, but one thing I knew as I was growing up. My dad, my stepdad wanted me to be a doctor, but I never had that in my head. What I knew is I wanted to be rich. <laughs> so I just knew I wanted to make money. I don't know how. 
But then I kept in school to make my mom proud, you know, because in Nankulabi, as we were growing up um, in the slums, and then I started music, people were like, ah, she cannot even go to school because she's doing music. And everyone used to turn music in a, 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 something for my you know. So I decided to continue with school to prove them wrong. But for me, I just wanted to be a businesswoman. I don't know how. I just had that in my head that I want to, to do business and be a rich woman. <laughs> One thing I knew is I, I, I knew I was going to be rich. Okay, I didn't know how or what kind of job I was going to do, but I had art in me. I loved drawing, painting, and um, even when, when, it, when I went to campus, I knew what I wanted to do. I looked around, I'm like, okay, what course can I do that fits drawing, painting, and all art stuff? So that's when I went, I went to, to BIFA, you know? Yeah, so I really didn't know what I wanted to, to do or be. But I knew I was going to be a successful woman in business. Uh, when at and what age did you realize that you can uh, do music? Or did you enter the music industry? Um, I started joining um, music when I was in senior four, but I was just, you know, hanging around people that do music. I wasn't so much into it. Uh, because a place like Nankulabi where there's so many young people who are talented by then so I was surrounded by talented guys you know and uh, there are places we would go to in the evening do rap sing do a cappella and stuff like that I would also go the days I was free and not working with my mom I could go and hang out with these young people so I got inspired as they were doing their rap stuff I started as a rapper you know, I, yeah, I started as a rapper because I was hanging around boys who were what we're doing. Like, okay. What age? Um, I think I was, I think I was around uh, 15. Yeah, I think around 15 years old. And in Nankulabia. So, and then later on, they started bringing these uh, competitions in the ghettos, like, you know. And uh, as young people, you don't have so much to do in the evenings. We could go and attend. Uh, I could give it a try. Sometimes I go through, sometimes I lose. But it was fun, you know. And then later on, um, someone introduced me to the ghetto kids. We, we, we came all the way from Nankulabi to, to look for the ghetto kids in March India. So when I came, I loved their stuff, how they were dancing. I kept around them as well. So I got more inspiration. And later on, I realized I could write music when, when I was in senior five. So I started writing songs for the kids. I wrote a song for the ghetto kids. They liked it. They went to studio, recorded the song. And then their manager was like, if you can write songs for kids, I think you can write I don't remember. Uh, then he just told me, I think you can write a song for yourself. Give it a try. I'm like, okay, let me try. So I wrote a love song. By then, I had my first, not my first boyfriend, but like, you know, you're a young girl, you're a teenager, you're starting to fall in love and stuff like that. So I wrote about my boyfriend by then. And um, I, I took teacher through, the manager of the Keto Kids took him through the lyrics he's like this is a nice song let's go to studio and record i'm like i cannot record i've never recorded before he's like you you just give it a try you will learn with time so we did our first recording um my first song Zakwa Gala, by then and i i didn't like how i sounded <laughs> the voice and everything i didn't like it but they kept on telling me don't lose, don't lose hope, you know, you will do better next time. So that's how I started doing music. And then later on, I started hanging around studios. I started getting gigs of backing artists by then, getting some money. And I enjoyed the whole journey and the whole process. Then later on, I met uh, Dr. Fizo. And he gave me an offer to do my first song, that hit, that was Osanula. Yeah, it was like my third recording in life and uh, 
God did it. It was a hit everywhere. And, and I felt like motivated. I'm like, oh, wow, now I can do it. You know, I continued. And for me in life, I never want to fail. Once I try something, I want to do it, continue doing it. Even when I, I don't do it perfectly, I know I'll do it later on. I'll do better. So I kept pushing and pushing. Yeah. The industry who was your inspiration, every time you were in uh, that side of Chibunya, you'll be looking at this person and be like, one day, who was your inspiration? By then we had we had some young artists who, who were doing well, like, you know, Fie. Since I, I was so much into the rap music, my mom discouraged me and she was like, no, you look at these young girls, like Fie, like in Tali by then. Also, Rema was doing some music by then. And uh, my mom discouraged me from doing hip hop. And I started listening to these ladies. And, you know, the music was amazing. Then I started listening to Juliana as well, Irene Nambiru. I'm like, okay, I think I can sing like them. So I dropped the rapping thing and um, I tried the singing. Yeah, so I looked at many people with uh, different styles. That's why, even up to now, I do different styles because I was looking at different everyone in their own style and get to pick something from them. The genre of music you're doing, you know, in Uganda, we people don't mind about the genres. Which genre are you doing? For me, I do uh, soft dance hall. Okay, people term it as Afrobeat as for now, Afrobeat and dance hall. Yeah. Your breakthrough? My breakthrough song, on Sanula. Uh, yeah. Sanula was my breakthrough song. How far did it take you? Oh, of course here, where I am right now. <laughs> if it wasn't for it, I wouldn't be Spice Diana. Trust me. Because it was, it was the first song that everybody got to know. Uh, and then, of course, that even up to now, I'm getting new fans. People who didn't know me yesterday, probably they're getting to know me today. But as for that song, I got a few fans. Yeah, and... Uh, you know, I never went back from then. Mm. You know, the, um, in the industry, there are a lot of uh, challenges and achievements. Uh, if we talk about uh, the achievements, uh, okay. Ah, so many, so many. Honestly, I'm so proud of myself, proud of the journey. In the seven years, I've uh, professionally been in the music industry. I'm proud of myself. Some things I might not even say on camera, but trust me, musically I've, I have grown, I've maintained, I've, um, my fan base has grown, my numbers have grown, I've had endorsements, I've had uh, big shows in the country, outside the country, I've made friends, I've had uh, big concerts, you know. My last concert in, um, in January, Logogo cricket over was a dream. I never knew that you know I would reach that level. So all these achievements, I had a record at uh, Freedom City, whereby people started entering my event at nine in the morning. By five, we closed the, the gates. You know, it was uh, the numbers have been overwhelming, and uh, I, I've been able to you know. Go, go to university because of music because if it wasn't for the music I wouldn't be able to go to school I wouldn't be able to take my siblings to school take care of my family myself mentally, spiritually financially I have grown and I'm grateful Spice Diana when we talk about Spice Diana off stage now we are talking about Namukwaya Leave alone the music, we're not talking about the studio, uh, things you do in camera. Who is Namukwaya? Hmm. Off stage. Off stage. Off stage, um, I'm a very normal person, by the way. Very normal, normal, normal. You will find me living the most normal life, you know. Very normal. Uh, I love my things simple, private, okay. And um, I don't know what I can say really about myself. Do you cook? Uh, no, I do not cook. I don't have the time. Do you know how to cook? I'm not a foodie. I know how to cook a few things. Yeah, but... Like water and rice? 
Titi. Uh, I know how to cook a few things, but it's been a while of late because Zengowa, I get tired. I work so hard. I get home so tired. And you only wake up to go to another event, you know. So, and I'm not a foodie. Like, I do not like eating. Eating is another problem. Yeah. But I, I clean. I love clean environment. I always try to clean. And uh, what other work do I do at home? Yeah, basically. But I'm a simple person at home. I'm a free, um, the way I dress up while at home, you'll even be surprised. Yeah, because I love, you can find me in a dira at home, or <laughs> find me in, in shorts, baggy shirts. That is me. Like, that's how simple I am. Can Namukwaya be a wife material? Yes, I can. Very much. Than you think. Yeah. I'm a. Anyway, see Jackwe one and I'm I'm I'm, I'm ABCD, but the people who have been with me, at least they know if you take time to know me, you will know the kind of person I am. Sometimes not everybody will get to know the real you, your inner person, but if they take time and they want to know, they will know. So people who have been with me, they know who I am. Mm. Do you believe uh, that love exists or do you believe in love? Mm, I do believe in love. Mm, I do. Yeah. How, how many love, whatever have you been in? <laughs> I, uh, not so many, but I've been in, in a couple of relationships. But with love involved, not so many. Because it's not easy to love someone, by the way. You can, you can be with someone, but deeply, love can fail to come along. You know, you can give it a try, but love fails to come along because it just grows. Mm. But have you ever been uh, heartbroken? Of course. Yeah. I'm human. Mm. How many times? Mm, let me see. I think like two times. I'm very careful and I don't fall in love like with my whole self, you know. <laughs> like I, I fall in love with one leg. Mm. So I've been heartbroken like two times, as far as I remember, two times. Mm. Have you ever been in a heartbreak that confused you? Be like, no, this one it wouldn't have done me like that one. <laughs> Things girls do, you feel like you want to be alone, want to die, what? You want to die? I've never been to a point of I want to die. <laughs> Who wants to die because of a man? Come on. You can be disappointed, but I've never been to that point. Even when I was, even when I was young, you know, like a teenager, because that's where we normally feel like, eh, you know, feel like you love someone to death until Lake Victoria dries. But no way. I mean, that's the time you feel like that, you know, because you're a teenager, you're new to these things. Everything is just, you know, you want to try out stuff. I never feel like I wanted to die, but I've been disappointed. You know, like you love someone, you like, you expect so much from them, you expect the relationship to work out, and it doesn't work out. But uh, I never feel like I want to die. But I've cried because of love. Mm. Yeah. Spice to cry, but now. <laughs> those people, those people, okay. I have, you know, Teddy, if somebody says I've never cried for love, they're lying. It, maybe they don't have hearts. They they don't have hearts. Yeah. And work alone. That again. I've not been heartbroken again. Maybe because I've grown up, I make decisions. If something isn't working out, you just move away. You know. But uh, I don't know. I don't see myself crying again. I've made a decision in love and you regret later. I wish I would been. Yeah, I think I've made, um, I think I've, I've uh, been in a relationship and I, I think once and I regret it, but I've not had so many regrets because I'm a person who takes time to take, um, to make decisions and take a step, you know, into a relationship. I take my time. So that's why I've, I have a few regrets. I have only one. Yeah. Eh? 
Uh, in life, what keeps you moving? Live alone uh, in the okay, both in the music and life. What keeps you moving? Um, it's it's the, it's the love, the love of people around me, my fans. You know, every time I feel down about something, even if it's business or personal, and then I step out and someone shows me love. I can easily forget about my troubles and I keep going. Yeah, so love, then my background, my achievements keep me going. I look at myself, I'm like, I've come a long way. And the fact that I'm here, I'm such a strong person and I should just keep going. There's so much great things waiting for me in the future. Before stepping on stage, what comes in your mind? going on stage you're looking at people, people waiting for you everyone is shouting screaming spice 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 what comes in your head i always want to just give the best to my fans i want to make them happy smile dance along with me i want to see everyone happy that's 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 what comes into my head i'm like can i can i really do it and i know i can always do it but you think about it you're like now this kind of audience how am i going to entertain them I am an entertainer, so I really start thinking straight away, how should I do it, you know? So that is it. I always want to see people happy with me, smiling, you know, forgetting their problems for a moment and just, you know, have fun, yeah. Have you ever been scared before stepping on stage? So many times, so many times. Since I'm always sober, you know, I'm always thinking straight, so I'm nervous sometimes. I am, yeah. Um, in the industry, people are tagged with that before stepping on stage, they have to fight. they have compliments they use before to kill that scareness. I don't know, use anything. People's love gives me the vibe. Uh, it gives me the strength. If people show me that love and, you know, they show they want me to be on stage, that's enough for me to have good vibes and energy. Mm. What disturbs you most in the music industry, in your journey? Yeah, you've met so many people. We've seen you. You've been a close friend to radio. Uh, let's first go into radio situation. Uh, how close were you with the, the late radio? Well... I had known radio for a few months, like that person. I, I just I had known him for a few months and then he passed away. But a few months I was with them, with Weasel. They were really supportive. And uh, there was like hope that we would work together on so many projects. And uh, it is sad that I never had so much time to spend with them has good life but at least i have wizzo he's still my friend yeah he's still my friend but it's sad that you know radio passed away but he was a great person he showed so much interest in, in my talent and um, the fact that he gave me a they gave me a collab together for free and they appeared in the video they were willing to push it together they were really supportive in the small, you know, time I was with them. Yeah. Um, when uh, Reddy had just gone, your video with them, everyone thought it was the video shoot. Uh, it trended a lot. Um, for you, you already you knew what had happened, and you knew it was not a, a stunt. And everyone was like, "Your stunt, you could let it later." What was in your mind by that time? It's so sad. I felt bad because. We've seen so many issues like that where something real happens to an artist and some, someone will say it's a stunt. Even when it's, it's about someone's life, it's really sad. Until someone is gone and then they're like, for sure it wasn't a stunt, you know? So it was sad, but at least the, the people that cared about him knew it wasn't a stunt. So that, that's what mattered, yeah. What, is, what beats your mind in the industry? You feel like, uh, no, the industry is fake. Um, some, some fellow people around us, I mean fellow artists, uh, um, sometimes like 
over ambitious and they are willing to do anything you know they're, they're willing to do anything to put anyone down you know as long as for them they are satisfied they're up there and yet we can all be stars you know without putting anyone down and yet they come to you like they're smiling they're okay with you but well when they go behind you it's something else um, but the anyway, what matters we all have our journeys we have our different hustles that's why I really never give time to that mm. um, you're a person of our social media um, and some other artists but our social media has put so many down and sometimes we see sometimes our social media trolling you um, do you ever regret uh, being in this industry with a social media life within mm, sometimes we think about it because we have so many miserable people on social media people who use it uh, wrongly people who just don't know what they're doing but all they care about is likes and you know the views but they don't mind what they say you know and yet you're also a human being you have family you have friends who care about you and if someone comes up and says something about you it hurts people who care about you your fans so but as for me i've learned to focus on people that love me i've learned to focus on you know my my music because i know no matter what people will always have something to say not everybody will love what you're doing so when you know that you at least focus on what you're supposed to do and leave people be let them be okay so it's the way to go otherwise you might not go to every person's house and be like hey stop doing this stop that, doing that because at the end of the day social media pays some of us we eat from it so you just have to focus on what pays you yeah i've ever been uh, on a long heads with a fellow artist you've seen us. yeah you've seen it some of the stories you've seen some of them have been, you know, um, faked stories, but still I'm Spice Diana. It doesn't change the fact that I'm here and I'm here to stay. So you let people be because we come from different backgrounds. We have different ambitions sometimes. We have different hassles. So sometimes people feel okay when they put you down. You let them be as long as it doesn't take the fact that you, doesn't take the fact that you spice Diana away, so I'll still spice Diana. What comes you down? Um, my fans, I mean, the love around me. As people are showing me so much love. Yeah, you know, some people hate on you. Sometimes they're not even haters. I won't call them haters, but not everybody's happy with your progress. And uh, I only focus on people that love me. I'll go on my social media, find people challenging on my songs, doing videos, showing me love, commenting positively, and I will smile, you know, focus on my business, get paid, do my shows, make people happy, go back home and sleep, do the next thing the next day, you know, and life goes on. Do you ever go back where you grew up from, Lao? Because uh, most of the life we will based on uh, Chiwunya, where you grew up. Do you ever go back? Uh, I've been there so many times. So many times I've been there. Ever since I left, I've been there like three times in Nankula because that's where I spend most of the time. I have many memories. I've been to places, like I've told you earlier, but uh, Nankula was different because it opened my eyes. And uh, that's when, that's where my dreams started from so i've always been going back to get those memories say hi to some of the people that are still there yeah how do those people you grew up with that look at you mostly those who did make it up and those who made it some made it but they're in different stuff different sectors you know how do they look at you how do they take i you? don't know because well i've not met all of them but the ones i've met some are happy for me yeah, the ones I've had a chance to meet, the ones I went to school with. But you know, 
because I'm always a busy person. Even when I go to places, I'm, you know, running up and down. I never get a chance to talk to people one on one. But I know some are happy for me. Those that are not happy for me, I don't know. I don't know what to say to them. Your best uh, two songs from your music? Um, Sanula, because that was my breakthrough. And City Regular, that's another hero song. I'll tell you about it in the future, in the near future. I'll tell you about that song. But it's been an amazing project. It's been a blessing. And um, yeah, it's been a blessing. I have a couple of other songs that have been, you know, amazing. The new song, Werere, is another song I love. And Baligoyankona is another song that is... Still, why do you love Baligoyankona? Because everyone takes uh, that song with a different story. No, that's, of course, that's why I did the song. So everyone can relate it to their lives, to whatever they want. They relate it to yours. Uh, that, that's okay still. Because I didn't know uh, who hustles and not everybody likes what I do. Not everybody's happy with me. Okay, so it's okay to relate the song with me because I'm in that hustle and everybody else watching me or who listens to this song, they also have a, the same story or maybe a different story, but at the end of the day, people will talk. They will talk about your hustle in, in different ways. Have you had a weird moment on stage? Mm, not yet. I've not fallen off stage and I do not pray for that. <laughs> I'm very careful and I don't do heels on stage. I'm very, I try to be careful. Oh, yeah, I've had one, but it wasn't on stage. It was on TV when my wig fell off. Mm. Yeah. I did the 32. Also that, it was weird too. <laughs> it was weird as well. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, Your favorite uh, Ugandan artist, two, at least two. Hmm. No one's the same. Uh, let me see, at the moment, at the moment, my name is Vange. Vange. Of head, not uh, like, this is my favorite, but those that come like really quick in your There are many, let me see. Um, Vange, I don't know Two best, two best. <laughs> Maybe. Two best. Uh, <laughs> don't, eh? <laughs> okay, two best songs from other artists. Um, from other artists at the moment. Which song? Uh, Alien Skin Party Party in the Kankube Party. Yes. And uh, which song? Which songs am I listening to lately? What do you love party party? I mean, it's it's a vibe song, and I hear it like more often, <laughs> and I like the vibe. Um, Aulimbara Palaso, Olupia. What's the title of the song? I tell you, just lately. I was listening to it this morning. I remember that title. Then Ebiseda uh, Orasaha. I like it. They've said, yeah, it's, it reminds me of those old days. Uh, yeah, and so many other songs. Mm. How, how do you see the industry lately with the, all the fracas, federation, what and everything? How do you see the industry? It's dull. It's a bit dull. Musically, things, there's been a lot of hate around. There's been a lot of politics around. Everything is being politicized. That's all I can say. It's dull. It's really dull. Music is really hard to push nowadays because people are not focused. You know, you know, you know. Yeah, there's been really a lot destruction. Mm. There's a question, everyone. Uh, in someone is uh, mind since. Uh, uh, let me bring it in. Would you wake up one day and have a collab with Shiba? If it happens, why not? She's an artist. Mm. If it happens, why would I say no? Mm. Yeah. Your remarks in the industry? Um, 
I wish you guys all the best to our fans. Thanks for supporting us. Um, and I don't know. I just pray the industry goes back to, you know, being an industry. Known just an industry where there's so much of hate in Coca-Cola, you know, this respect for each other. I just wish time comes because there was a time when music was music, other stuff with other stuff, but at the moment, music is music with so many, you know. Yeah, but for our fans, thank you for pushing with us. Thank you for standing with us. I've had a couple of shows. I'm still. Um, having so many shows and I can't wait to see you guys. You're not able to support Tingira. Where are we coming? Please support us in big numbers. Yeah. Q. And check out my new song, Boerere. The video is out on YouTube. It's on trending. Keep streaming the music uh, on all music platforms. Was that a deep? Inshallah, anytime soon. Anytime, yeah. Anytime soon. Okay. Recording, you got